audio from a microphone in my life. But you know what? There's a time for everything. This is going to sound horrible. But you know what? This is more a proof of concept than anything. Yes, hello. This is Seashore's Wall, also known by Stone. Also known by a few other names, but we're not going to go into them all. I have a lot of aliases online. But the point is that this is Dwarf Fortress and I'm speaking. More specifically, this is a fresh download of Dwarf Fortress. Not my personal one. This is specifically labelled Dwarf Fortress for YouTube, you know. Like how my Minecraft is Minecraft for YouTube. But if you download Dwarf Fortress from the website, You'll, and then you unzip the file, this exact screen will be what you get. This is a sort of faux tutorial done by an idiot. <laughs> anyway, so, first things first, in any Dwarf Fortress, you have to make the world. You can't put a fortress in thin air, after all. So you click enter on create new world, escape on this, and, oh look, options. Awkwardly put in the corner because Dwarf Fortress is old. Anyway, now we're going to be real quick about this, so I'm just going to go for a smaller world on a short history with a low number of civilizations, a low number of sites, a medium number of beasts, a medium number of natural savagery, and a frequent mineral occurrence because who doesn't like minerals? Now, this isn't advised settings here. Don't take this as what you... Quite frankly, if you want to start a Dwarf Fortress, it's best to just leave the stuff default for the first one, or maybe check the wiki to get a, you know, different... You know, check the wiki. Oh, oh, actually check the wiki always, anyway. The Dwarf Fortress wiki, very useful. Anyway, we're gonna go. We're gonna gen the world. It's not gonna take long, because it's very small. The bigger it is, the longer it'll take, you see, because there's a lot going on. Now, speaking of a lot going on, some people look at the ASCII and go, Ah, ASCII! Oh no! What am I ever going to do? There are symbols on the screen that mean things. But look, it's not all that hard, okay? And I'm going to show you that it's not all that hard, because I'm an idiot, and I play Dwarf Fortress all the time! Anyway, we're just going to accept this, it looks like there's a necromancer tower up there. But we're just gonna accept this. This is happening. Yes, it's going to save the world and put us back on the main menu. Because now we have a world in this particular... Yes, we have a world. So we can start a Dwarven Fortress, which is what you do in Dwarf Fortress. There's also Adventure Mode and Legends. We're not going to get into that. I just realised I haven't got my timer on. Some things never change even if, uh, let's say, 3 minutes and 45 seconds have passed. Alright. Uh, that will be going for another 6 minutes then. Anyway, now, if you look here on this map to the uh, left and most upper corner there's a local map and to the right of that is a region map right so that little that little yellow arrow look if you look it's going to go right up to the left oh, right up to the corner you see me moving it around with the keys that is our overall where it is map and the local map is a expansion of that single tile now, we're obviously not going to start in the sea, because that would be silly. No, we're going to find somewhere, anywhere really. It don't really matter. Well, it does matter. It actually matters quite a lot. But I'm very... Mm, uncaring, so we're just going to put it wherever I feel like. Now, this information on the opposite side of the screen, the uh, right turn... The right side, that's important information. If you're looking at that, yeah, that's important information. It tells you all about the place, because the other side just tells you where it is. So let's see. How is this? Mm, light aquifer. 
That's not the worst thing in the world, a light aquifer. I actually like a light aquifer. Shallow metals, that's nice. Deep metals, also nice. Flux stone, very deep soil, which means we're going to be going through a lot of soil. But you know what? And it's also freezing. But you know what? Who cares if it's freezing? Let's see here. So let's just press tab if you look in the lower left corner there's all sorts of controls that's how I'm you know doing this let's look at our neighbors dwarves elves and hmm where's the goblins Are there just no goblins I don't know if I want to start the fortress in a place where there's no enemy let's see here no there don't seem to be any goblins on this map anymore I guess they all died that's tragic really because that means that this map has no conflict when it comes to invaders but now if I was just playing alone I'd probably actually destroy this map for this lack of enemy but we're not going to do that this might uh, this might actually help us when it comes to showing you stuff so we'll start in this tufted jungles a freezing jungle heavily forested Thick vegetation, wilderness, on the stream, the wisp of something. I can't actually read the full of that because it's been shortened. Chucking? Who knows? Anyway, we're going to press the E button for the embark. And we could go through all of the... And we could prepare for the journey carefully, which would... Let us choose our names, symbols, what we're bringing along, who we're bringing along, skills. But this is meant to be a very loose tutorial, and to be honest, I can't be bothered. So, we're just going to click enter here, and then it will... Yeah, give it a second. It'll do the thing, I assure you. There we go. Now I'm just going to read this out. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of Abel Amas. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labour comes sustenance, whether by boat, plough or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now, enough time to delve secure lodgings. Uh, the dingoes get hungry, a new chapter of dwarven history begins here, at this place. Admastop, pass blockades, strike the earth. Yes, we'll be doing that. Oh, would you look at that? We start on a mountain, pause the game with a space. Let's take a quick look, see? Now I know what you're thinking. Oh god, what's all this then? I don't understand any of this. Now, it all makes sense. Now, you got to remember, Dwarf Fortress is a top-down video game. You know what a top-down game is, right? Maybe you do. Like, uh, you've, you've seen top-down camera angle before. Don't pretend you haven't. Maybe you haven't heard the term, but you've seen it. It's down from the sky view. And each, and I'm cha and I'm using uh, shift and the arrowy keys here on the keyboard to go down. Look, there's our dwarves. Oh god, two of them spawned on a tree. Uh, hope they can get off that, or we're gonna have to cut it down. Yeah. Just that look, eh? On a tutorial for the for well, a fake tutorial. People who's gonna be watching this are almost definitely gonna know what they're doing. But yeah, down here, if you looked, all the white is snow. It's a freezing biome, so of course there's a lot of snow. The the brown stumps there, those are trees, and if you look, the trees go into bigger bits because branches. You know how branches work, don't you? And leaves, which are also white with snow. Now, we're going to dig. If you can dig, you can do anything in Dwarf Fortress. We press D, and you press D again. And look, it's the little friendly cursor again. Look at him moving around. 
Now I think this here, this is a good spot. We're going to dig into the mountain. Enter, enter again, and we just created a little, a little nook. Now, oh yes, I can move off that one. Well, they can worry about that jeweler. But then again, a jeweler doesn't do anything. I don't know why they put him in the default. You know. Oh yeah, he moved. Now, we just created a little hallway here. Yes. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Make a large room. Not a large, large room, but a large enough room. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yes, we're going to make a room. That's one, two, three, four, eight, ten by ten. How do you feel about a ten by ten box? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A ten by ten box. It's rectangles though, so it's not going to be a perfect box. And a dwarf. Co Cogsack. The dwarf. Very good name for a dwarf. He's going to be doing it. With a wire of dabblers. Great name. A member of the the bust of depth, by the way, is our Sib's name. <laughs> Which is great. Now, we're not going to do much this episode. I just gent this world and... Cogsack's going to be, uh... Digging. And yeah. He's going to be... Look at him go! He's a little smiley face that's doing the thing. He's got a pickaxe and he's digging out that space that I told him to dig out. That's how you do things in Dwarf Fortress. You tell people to dig things out and they do it. You tell people to build something and they do it. You don't have direct control. You just tell them what to do. Yes. When he finishes this up, I'm going to be ending this episode. This episode was more of a proof of concept than anything, so I'm going to be saving the game now. So, he's just re made a room. But, we'll get into that later. I'm pressing escape, I'm saving the game. This proof of concept recording is going to be over. So, now it's up to you. Leave comments if you care. Look at this video if you care, or don't. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we'll see if I decide to continue this. This is more of a proof of concept than anything, yes. And I just realised that I've completely overshot it because I forgot that I forgot to start the timer until a while. Oh god, this is going to take ages to upload. <sighs> Ah well, we will see. Extra special, extra length video at the start of this series, possible start of this possible series. We will see. We will see. Goodbye for now. <laughs>